Well, hey folks, Real Honesty with Jar Metal is a 25 year reflection on WCW Beach Blast 1993. Not a very good pay per view. Outside of two matches, really, this was skippable. Unfortunate, considering the early 90s WCW pay per views, at least a good amount, and all the 1992 WCW pay per views, outside of a few matches, as you're going to have on any of them were consistently really good. Great American Bash 1992 was good. I like Beach Blast 1992. This was, I mean, it was only one of two Beach Blasts. Like, 92 was better than this one. That's not to say the talents didn't try, but there was some messy stuff um, on these shows. And, of course, you had the beach set up and everything. And Tony Schiavone looking like he had one of those, uh, like, you know, fake, like, the fake eyeglasses with the fake nose looked like he had one of those fake noses on there but it was actually supposed to be the sunscreen stuff it looked ridiculous but whatever it's nothing against Shivani it's just how they had him look but it was Shivani and Jesse Ventura doing the commentary this is unfortunate because Jesse Ventura by this point wasn't really that good on commentary he he got in a few good jokes but I think at this point showed that he didn't really give a shit anymore at least that's how I took it <clears throat> but Eight matches on the whole card, and quite frankly, you could have made this a Clash of Champions with half this card, and it would have been just as good. But no, this is a show people paid for. Now, it did get better towards the end. Like, the last four matches weren't bad, but two of them are really good. But anyway, let's just start off. Silly Beach setup and everything. You had uh, Bischoff and Missy Hyatt doing um, interviews and everything. And that was really it. I don't think you did anything backstage. I don't think anything happened backstage. You just had, um, you had, like, some video packages that hyped up a couple matches. But you had Ron Simmons versus Paul Orndorff. It was a TV title match. And the, if Orndorff got DQ'd, then he would lose the TV title. That didn't mean, of course, that Simmons couldn't get DQ'd, which he did get DQ'd. I mean, it was really messy the way they introduced this stuff. Um... It wasn't bad, but I hated the DQ over the top rope because that's what Simmons did. Like, Orndorff tried to pile drive him. Simmons, you know, chucked uh, Orndorff over the top rope. I mean, you'd try to do something to avoid getting, you know, hit with a pile driver. And the ref called for the DQ. So that happened, and Simmons beat him up a little bit more. And uh, I never liked the over the top rope rule. I mean, I know it was in a lot of promotions, not just WCW, but AWA. AWA used it a lot, especially in the Hogan Bachwinkle feud. And, you know, they use it in other promotions. I'm, I'm certainly not saying, like, WCW is the only one. I just never really liked it very much. I thought it was kind of dumb. That That's just my opinion. I mean, as much as I love old school wrestling, that's one thing I never really liked. But sometimes it did help further with some angles. My problem is the Simmons versus Orndorff, it, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't very good. Let's just say that much. I mean, Orndorff was a really good TV champion. Simmons, superb athlete. This just wasn't great. Um, and you had Two Cold Scorpio uh, and Marcus Alexander Bagwell, WCW's 1992 Rookie of the Year, further proof that WCW needed better management if you're going to pick Bagwell as your Rookie of the Year. Bagwell was a mid-card worker at best. He was much better in tag teams because he really could not carry a singles match on his own. He just couldn't. just wasn't very good. And they face off against Shanghai Pierce and Tex Slaginger. Slang Slazinger, I think is how you say it. They were the, uh, soon to be Godwins, believe it or not. Yeah. Dennis Knight and Henry O. Godwin. How cool was that? Um, it is what it is. It, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. Um, it was okay. Like, Scorpio was a star of the whole thing. Scorpio hey, in a really, really cool dive at one point. Pin broke up, but then would hit a 450 splash soon after. Get the victory. Cool. Okay, move on from that. Not not bad. It was a little bit better than the other match, and that's nothing against Orndorff and Simmons. Speaking of Orndorff, you had Orndorff being interviewed by Missy Hyatt, and you had the equalizer, Dave Sullivan. Ugh. He was the equalizer. I think he was EVAD. He was just, it just ugh. He was not very good. He he just, he wasn't. He he really was lousy. Um, And Eric Watts versus Lord Steven Regal, and oh, sweet Christ, Eric Watts was just not meant to be a wrestler he just really wasn't he he wasn't horrible but among wrestlers kids like you know people that are like obviously related any way that's related to wrestlers if you try to get in there you better make sure that you're actually good at it and that you or at least that you can get good at it and i'm not saying eric wasn't an athlete he clearly was he just wasn't very good at this whole wrestling thing he could do an stf better than cena i think i could do an stf better than cena 
and I'm not even an athlete. I mean, but Cena, just Cena has just decided where it's like, okay, I don't want the kids to see this, but he just offers no pressure. The arms are like out this far. It's ridiculous. Um, it's enough of that, but this just, no, it just, it just wasn't good. Um, it just, I mean, it was all right. Regal tried. Regal had to deal with a lot of slugs during his WCW run, like when he had to deal with Goldberg in February 98. Speaking of slugs, I will do an unpopular opinion at some point on Goldberg. I don't know when exactly. It might happen sometime in July. It might happen sometime in August, but it will happen at some point. But Eric Watts almost gets the STF on. There's some decent exchange, but nothing spectacular. So he gets the STF on Sir William, who was, um, you know, the manager or the valet. I get well, I mean, he was, you know, a guy who's always the manager of um, William Regal or Stephen Regal. Slaps Eric Watts. Somehow the ref doesn't see this. Eric gets distracted and gets rolled up one, two, three. Regal cuts a promo at the end. Okay. He challenges for a TV title. He says, I want to bring the TV title back to the Queen. I think Regal had already been TV champion at that point. So good, okay, that that's fine. We get that hype. I believe Regal became TV champion a little bit later that year. I know he reviewed all the WCW pay-per-views with the exception of Wrestle War and Battle Bowl. And I'm actually in the process also of reviewing it. Excuse me. Every single uh, Clash of Champions. And I will have a review up of the Clash of Champions from 1993. August of 93 specifically, when the Shockmaster made his debut. <clears throat> I recommend you check out the Legends of Wrestling. I forget which one it is, but it's like, it has the Shockmaster as the thumbnail that they use, and I believe. And it's just Dusty. Dusty talking about the story of the Shockmaster is just hilarious. Just absolutely hilarious. Because he was there. He actually came up with the idea. But anyway, yeah, so St uh, Stephen Regal beats Eric Watts. Not very good. Johnny B. Bad versus Mac Payne. It was called a super grudge match. Not just a grudge match. Super grudge match. Yet, they weren't allowed to really do a street fight thing or anything. This happened, I guess, on one of the most recent episodes. It was either Clash of Champions. It was either Clash of Champions or Worldwide Wrestling. Max, Plain, Max Payne, rather, and Max Splain, who would later become Man Mountain Rock, would get, you know, he got the Bad Blaster, which was just a confetti gun that he got, that, you know, Johnny B. Bad had. And he, 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 shot, he shot Johnny B. Bad with his own Bad Blaster. Bad took his own Bad Blaster to his face. That, that 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 probably should have come out a whole lot better than, ever, than it did. I guess it was some bad pain for Johnny. Ow. Um, it was a bad pun. That one hurt a little. Um, anyway, this was not very good. Johnny B. Bad won quick. This was not very good. They really, they it's for building this as a super grudge match, it was over like that. And then the Hollywood Blondes versus Arn Anderson and Paul Roma for the WCW Tag Titles. There we go. Match of the show right here. Perfect. Great tag team wrestling. Antics at first with the Hollywood Blondes trying to get under the Horseman's skin. Yes, this is when Roma was still part of the Horseman. Nothing against Paul Roma. I actually think he was a very, very good tag team wrestler. I don't know why they wouldn't have kept him in the Horseman. I think it worked at least temporarily. But to be honest, Roma and Paul Orndorff, the two Pauls, pretty wonderful. They were a much better tag team. They complemented each other really well. And I think should have been kept together as a team a little bit longer, but that's my opinion. Anyway, so this is a really, really good match. I recommend you guys go out and watch this one. If you pick no other match to watch before this, the fifth match, watch it. Watch this and watch the main event. This is just damn good, damn good tag team wrestling. The Horsemen played baby faces, and Austin and Pillman kept cutting off either Anderson or Roma from getting a tag, and then cut off Anderson for a long time from getting a tag. And finally, he was able to tag Roma, and it was just really, really good stuff. And it looked like the Horsemen were going to get the victory. They didn't. And then, you know, Hollywood Blondes managed to get the roll-up victory. Austin pinned Roma. Good stuff. Great. They managed to just escape with their titles just by that much. And it was really good. It was really good tag team match. I really enjoyed tag, tag, good tag team action like this. This is what WCW excelled at as opposed to WWE. Now, don't get me wrong. WWE had some really good tag teams. But... This is when wrestling <clears throat> really was starting to bubble back up on cable and pay-per-view. WWE and WCW got in a pissing contest. It's just unfortunate that Jim Hurd undid so much that WCW could have done with the great talent. That WWE had such a head start, it took WCW so many years to catch up when it shouldn't have. But anyway, this is a really, really good, terrific 
WCW tag title match, and I recommend you watch it. And then everything kind of comes to a screeching halt, because you have Dustin Rhodes versus Rick Rude, an Iron Man challenge for the U.S. title, the vacant U.S. title. It was held up, um, it was held up after a disputed finish, where both men got their shoulders up during the three count. Eh, I mean, it was what it was. I like the Iron Man match that Rick Rude had with Ricky Steamboat before this. I did, you know, the year before this. I didn't like this one because I don't mind Iron Man matches that go one fall, one fall, and then you have a couple minutes to, like, decide the final fall. I don't have a problem with that if it's paced right. This wasn't. You had Dustin focusing on Rude's back and ribs. And Rude busting down Dustin as well. They did some good wear down moves, but a few too many rest holds. Few too many. And Rick Rude got the Rude Awakening after like about 12 minutes, 12, 13 minutes, something like that. And that was first fall. And then Dustin managed to get, after a whole bunch of rest holds, I mean so many in 2003, 2004, Randy Orton would have been proud. Running Bulldog after a fake out and Dustin gets... Uh, the first fall for him, so it's 1-1, one, one, and he got, like, less than three minutes left, and then Dustin gets, like, a DDT, and 1-2, can't get it on time, because he gets 1-2, and then the bell rings. So then we do another, and then they're going to do another match at some point, and I know Dustin becomes the champion at some point soon after this, and then Rick Rude goes to on to be the WCW International Heavyweight Champion at... I want to say it was Fall Brawl. Him and him and Flair, I know, had a really, really good match. I believe it was a Fall Brawl. Yeah, this... It wasn't bad. I credit these guys for going out there and cutting a good pace at times for 30 minutes. But just the, the constant rest holds got annoying. So this wasn't... This isn't something you need to watch. If you want to watch any Iron Man match, 30-man Iron Man match, Ricky Steamboat versus Rick Rude at the previous Beach Blast would be perfect. And then you have video packages bringing us up to speed on Ric Flair versus Barry Windham for the NWA title. <clears throat> this, it felt like it just got started and then it suddenly ended. Like it just like was a quick finish. Not bad, but I mean, Barry, I think Barry might have been dealing with a knee injury or something because I don't think Barry was on TV much after this, um, or at least for a bit. But... You had, like, you know, he had some good power moves, but he was starting to gain some weight at this point. It showed. Sorry, it just did. But, you know, Flair doing his usual moves, this kind of stuff, doing some good stuff. There was a fan at one point that said, yeah, the ring, Flair, you're too old. Yeah, well, fuck you, idiot. <clears throat> um, not even sure if you're watching this or if you're even still coherent, but just like, yeah, fuck that person that said that in 93, Flair was too old to wrestle. 2003, I could sort of see it. 2013, absolutely. But 93, come on. He's a hell of a lot better than a lot of the people that they had there. But yeah, it was, it was good enough, but then you had Rick suddenly get the figure four on. And Barry looks like he's trying to struggle to the ropes and everything. And he forgets to raise his shoulders up and one, two, the ref counts uh, uh, Barry's shoulders down. So it's a figure four pin. So Barry suddenly loses the NWA title. I don't know if he forgot his spot or if he was if he was dealing with a serious knee injury or something, but that just that happened and so Flair's the NWA champion. It was really quick. I think it was like ten minutes, maybe eleven. It wasn't very long. Like you could have cut out one match and given some more time for this, but maybe they were pressed for time. I don't know. Maybe Barry is injured. But Flair won the NWA title. I believe that was the original, you know, plan anyway, but I'd be surprised because Barry wasn't really that great of a champion. Sorry, he was <clears throat> he had knee problems and stuff like that, and it just wasn't working. But yeah, then so that happens. So Flair, you know, then cuts an interview like only he can. Ten time NWA champion, good. And then, but not a very good match. It was kind of goofy just to see the finish. And then you had Sting and Davy Boy Smith, the Superpowers versus the Masters of the Power Bomb. Sid and Vader, the recently departed Vader. I'm actually recording this, just clarification, I'm actually recording this a couple days after his death, in case anybody wonders why I say the recently departed, because I watched this a couple weeks before the, you know, the anniversary, the anniversary, the 25-year anniversary of this pay-per-view came up, and so yeah, I just want to say, just, you know, rest in peace, big man, one of the best, one of the best super heavyweights of all time if not the best super heavyweight of all time. But it was a good mix of uh, power and speed. <clears throat> Started off hot with Sting taking down Sid. Sid and Vader were really, really good as power team. 
and Davy Boy Smith had some good moves in there too. But Davy Boy got bad around a lot at the end of it. I mean, you had the Vader bomb, and then he went up for the moon salt. And so Sting and Sid are up on the ramp. And so Vader hits a moon salt, and friggin' you know, Sting. Sting just runs in and just dives and breaks this whole thing up with Davy Boy. Or bre breaks up the whole pen with Davy Boy. And Davy Boy's selling and selling. And then, like, maybe even 30 seconds later, is up, in a up trying to get a crucifix on Vader. And suddenly gets the pen one, two, three. So suddenly, Vader, the WCW champion, has been pinned. Holy crap. It wouldn't really lead to much of anything because Davy Boy Smith would be fired from WCW later that year. But. It was kind of weird that Vader took the pin. I mean, granted, title wasn't on the line, but still. Anyway, so I'm going to say a C plus because we, outside of those two matches I mentioned, the main event and the WCW tag title match really wasn't much of anything to write home about. So anyway, that's what I got to say. Do you agree? Do you disagree with what I said? Have you seen this show? What other WCW shows would you like me to review? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe also. It's been Real Honesty with John Ritland, and I will see you soon.